Jean-Baptiste Kelly Acute B.E.R. was a French general during the French Revolutionary Wars. His military career started in Habsburg service but his plebeian ancestry hindered his opportunities. Eventually, he volunteered for the French army in 1792, and rose through the ranks. Kelly Acute B.E.R. served in the Rhineland during the War of the First Coalition, and also suppressed the Vendée Revolt. He retired to private life in the peaceful interim after the Treaty of Campo Formio, but returned to military service to accompany Napoleon in the Egyptian campaign in 1798-99. When Napoleon left Egypt to return to Paris, he appointed KLE Acute BER as commander of the French forces. He was assassinated by a student in Cairo in 1800. Biography Early career KLE Acute BER was born in Strasbourg, where his father worked as a builder. He briefly engaged in 1769 in the 1st Hussar Regiment, but resigned to study. From 1770 to 1774, architecture, partly in Paris with Jean Chalgrin, his opportune assistance to two German nobles in a tavern brawl obtained for him nomination to the Military School of Munich. From this education, he obtained a commission in the Kaunitz Regiment of the Imperial Army. He took part in the War of the Bavarian Succession, but did not see major engagements, as he was stationed alternately in the garrisons of Mons, Mechelen and Luxembourg in the Austrian Netherlands. He resigned it in 1783 on finding his humble birth hindered his chances for promotion. On returning to France he received the appointment of Inspector of Public Buildings at Belfort, where he studied fortification and military science. In 1792 he enlisted in the O-Rhine Volunteers. Due to his military knowledge he at once gained election as adjutant and soon afterwards as lieutenant colonel. French revolutionary wars at the defensive mines he so distinguished himself that though disgraced along with the rest of the garrison and imprisoned, he promptly won reinstatement and became in August 1793 a general of brigade. He won considerable distinction in the suppression of the Vendeans, and two months later gained promotion to general of division. In these operations began his intimacy with Marceau, with whom he defeated the royalists at Le Mans and Savigny. When he openly expressed his opinion that the Vendeans merited lenient measures, the authorities recalled him, but reinstated him once more in April 1794 and sent him to the army of the Samba and Meuse. He displayed his skill and bravery in the numerous actions around Charlois, and especially in the crowning victory of Fleurus, after which in the winter of 1794-1795 he besieged Mainz. In 1795, and again in 1796, he held the chief command of an army temporarily, but declined a permanent appointment as commander-in-chief. On 13 October 1795 he fought a brilliant rearguard action at the bridge of Neuwerd, and in the offensive campaign of 1796 he served as Jordan's most active and successful lieutenant. Egyptian campaign after the retreat to the Rhine, he again declined a chief command. He withdrew into private life early in 1798. He accepted a division in the expedition to Egypt under Bonaparte, but suffered a wound in the head at Alexandria in the first engagement, which prevented his taking any further part in the campaign of the pyramids, and caused his appointment as governor of Alexandria. In the Syrian campaign of 1799, however, he commanded the vanguard, took Hawarish, Gaza and Jaffa, and won the great victory of Mount Tabor on 15-16 April 1799. When Napoleon returned to France towards the end of 1799, he left KLE Acute BER in command of the French forces. In this capacity, seeing no hope of bringing his army back to France or of consolidating his conquests, he negotiated the Convention of El Arish with Commodore Sidney Smith, winning the right to an honourable evacuation of the French army. When Admiral Lord Keith refused to ratify the terms, KLE Acute BER attacked the Turks at the Battle of Heliopolis. 
Although he had only 10,000 men against 60,000 Turks, Kleber's forces utterly defeated the Turks on 20 March 1800. He then retook Cairo, which had revolted against French rule. K. Eliacute Ber, son of an operative mason and a prominent Freemason himself, was attestedly instrumental in bringing Freemasonry to Egypt. While he was negotiating with Sidney Smith in January 1800, K. Eliacute Ber opened a Masonic temple in Cairo and thus created the Isis Lodge serving as its first master. Assassination shortly after these victories, a Kurdish Muslim student, Soliman el Halabi, living in Egypt, knifed K. Eliacute Ber while walking in the garden of the palace of Alfi Bik. He appeared to be begging from K. Eliacute Ber and when he took his hand, he stabbed him in the heart, then his stomach, then his left arm, then his right cheek and ran away to hide near the palace. He was soon caught, with the dagger which he had used to kill K. Eliacute Ber, and was later executed. The assassination happened in Cairo on 14 June 1800, coincidentally the same day on which his friend and comrade the sex fell at Marengo. The assassin's right arm was burned off, and he was impaled in a public square in Cairo and left for several hours to die. Suleiman's skull was shipped to France and used to teach French medical students what the French authorities claimed was the bump of crime, and fanaticism. Burial after his assassination Kleber's embalmed body was repatriated to France. Fearing that his tomb would become a symbol of republicanism, Napoleon ordered it held at the Chateau d'If, on an island near Marseille. It stayed there for 18 years until Louis XVIII granted K. Eliacute Ber a burial place in his hometown of Strasbourg. He was buried on 15 December 1838 below his statue located in the center of place K. Eliacute Ber. His heart is in an urn in the cavo of the governors beneath the altar of the St. Louis Chapel in Les Invalides, Paris. Kleber's name is inscripted in column 23 on the southern pillar of the Arc de Triomphe. Assessment. K. Eliacute Ber emerged as undoubtedly one of the greatest generals of the French Revolutionary Epoch. Though he distrusted his powers and declined the responsibility of supreme command, there is nothing in his career to show that he would have been unequal to it. As a second-in-command no general of his time excelled him. His conduct of affairs in Egypt at a time when the treasury was empty and the troops were discontented for want of pay, shows that his powers as an administrator were little, if at all, inferior to those he possessed as a general.